Hello, I'm Father Kevin Hanlon, a Mary Knoll priest here at our Mary Knoll headquarters, uh, north of New York City in Ossining, New York. And I'm glad to be here again for our Mary Knoll Monthly Prayer Guild, for this time for the month of May. I hope you all had a wonderful Easter and are having a good Easter season and looking forward to Pentecost. Today we put special focus for this month on Father Damien of Molokai, who I hope or I expect a, a number of you have heard of, um, even those who weren't raised Catholic have heard of this great saint um, through various books and uh, films, and he always becomes a subject uh, for a new film or documentary as the years go by. He was born in 19, I'm sorry, in 1840 in Belgium. He was the last of a last child of a family of seven. And he worked uh, at 13. His father asked him to stop his schooling and to work in the family business. His dad was a corn merchant. So Damien uh, went to get a little more schooling as in the industrial arts so that he could help his father. Uh, but one day a redemptorist priest came and gave a parish mission. And this, during this time, Damien became, became convinced that he should become a priest. He probably was encouraged in this thought by the fact that his older brother, Auguste, was a, uh, becoming a priest in the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. He also had two older sisters who had become nuns. So quite a Catholic and inspiring family it was. Well, thanks be to God, his father let him enter the congregation, which at first determined that Damien should probably be a lifelong brother uh, helping in the mission of the congregation. But others recognized that while he was not so educated, he was intelligent. And uh, his brother, Auguste, had made sure to teach him Latin as he grew up. And his Latin ability was very good. And one thing led to another, and he was allowed to proceed as a seminarian. But he had a secret desire. The congregation he worked for was not a missionary order but they did have missions, and Damien prayed often that he might be able to become a missionary. Uh, his brother, Auguste, uh, was ordained and to be sent to the mission in the kingdom of Hawaii. Uh, maybe Damien felt a little envious that his brother had, re had gained such a, uh, uh, his own dream, you might say. Well, wouldn't you know it, August became ill. And after some time, they had to give up on the idea of sending August with the other three missionaries. And they instead sent the seminarian Damien with the three. He arrived in the kingdom of Hawaii in 1864 and was ordained shortly after that. Hawaii at that time, as I mentioned, was an independent kingdom. Uh, but before Damien arrived, it had, had been ravaged by different Western and Asian diseases that the isolated people of Hawaii had no resistance to. And one of these illnesses was leprosy. The king of Hawaii, um, Kamehameha, was very afraid of the disease of leprosy spreading, so he and his officials decided to create a leper colony in the, on the island of Molokai, separated completely from the, uh, the big island. Um, 
The bishop, knowing of the terrible conditions that these new lepers had found, that they had gone there without family, uh, that these, this place could not support them so well until they developed it, decided to send uh, a priest. And he did not want to condemn any of his priests to you know, spending their life uh, in one place with the danger of contracting leprosy. So he created a team of four of his priests to rotate, uh, you know, spend a year or so on the island. <clears throat> and wouldn't you know it, uh, Damien was the first one chosen. And he went and he uh, became one with the people. They say he made very few distinctions between himself and them. He ate what they ate. He recreated in the way they did. He, they would pass a pipe around and he would smoke the pipe. So maybe not the most, um, by the knowledge of today's hygiene, not the most safe thing to do, but he wanted to show them that he truly was part of them. As it turned out, the uh, priest that was supposed to replace him himself became ill. Damien's time became longer and longer. And the people themselves begged the bishop to not replace <clears throat> Father Damien. And he, in fact, stayed there for 14 years, uh, after which he, he died of leprosy himself. After 10 years on the island, he had contracted the disease. And his story became famous by different writers who would preach about him, teach about him, and uh, everything that they investigated pointed to his determination, his love for the people, and his deep spirituality. Uh, he was beatified and then canonized a saint. Uh, lately, though, some historians and researchers have said, did we give enough credit to the king and to the Hawaiian officials, to the sisters who came to help him, and to other lay leaders who helped develop the leper colony from a disaster area to a functioning uh, village? full of uh, care and good people. And, and the answer was, maybe we did not. Uh, the church, of course, in its preaching about Damien, focused on Damien, but he had the help of many others in the work he did. And uh, I think that's good that we have developed a more balanced perspective on the leper colony at Molokai. Um, because what Damien did uh, I'd say his most important work was to be a saint. It wasn't that he himself, like a superman, uh, developed and, and cured and fixed everything. No, he was a man that was there with the people who gave them hope that there in fact was a God and that God was helping them all individually and bringing them together for the good. So we're very thankful for Father Damien. We're also thankful for all the research and medical science that was devoted to the disease, Hansen's disease, and that because of modern medicine, uh, no leper, no sufferer from Hansen's disease has to die of it. Uh, we, do, we are able now to cure leprosy. So our thanks to the saint and also thanks to all those who through the years have worked with those who suffer greatly. We take as example to ourselves though, uh, any saint like Damien challenges us to be generous to those in need around us, first to members of our family who may be suffering. Also, we reach out, uh, we stay close to our church and close to those in the body of Christ and also we look for those around us who might be, they're not suffering from leprosy, but they might have, uh, there are shut-ins, there are people uh, who suffer quietly, who with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we might be guided 
to befriend them and to be part of their uh, spiritual strength and uh, help. So let us ask Damien to continue, St. Damien to continue to pray for us all. Let's now take uh, to mind and heart some of the prayer intentions that you have sent in and also to pray for all the prayers that you have in your hearts at this moment that our loving Father with the intercession of his saints might hear and answer them. For your son Stephen, your daughter and your grandson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world peace, for the homeless and the lonely of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For living and deceased members of your family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Eldon on his anniversary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For better health for family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your son David, who has cancer, and that it would soon go into remission, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your son Dan and your daughter Maureen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your special intentions as you suffer the loss of your beloved husband of 66 years, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the members of the Mary Knoll Prayer Guild, both living and deceased, and for all of their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We join our prayers together now with the prayer that Jesus himself left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We ask the intercession of Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. And let us now pray together this month's prayer for Intercession from Father Damien of Molokai. Lord God, we praise you for raising up Father Damien, remembering him among your saints who glorify your divine image among those exiled to Molokai, suffering from leprosy and thus rejected by society. By living and dying among these poorest of the poor in Hawaii, Damien showed through word and deed that you, Lord, have not abandoned them and remain with them no matter how terrible their disease or disfigurement. Following too, following St. Damien's example, we may too ignore social scorn to safeguard and restore the dig dignity of all whom the world rejects, creating ohana, family, and welcoming all to gather around your holy table. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Mary Knoll Missionary of the Month is Brother Lauren Beaudry. Uh, Brother Lauren Beaudry and myself, you might say, are classmates. Uh, he went, went through Brother's education and formation at the same time I was in the Mary Knoll Seminary, 
uh, but we took final oath. I know in religious congregations you call it vows. We call it an oath of obedience to our Society of Apostolic Life. So in 1973, excuse me, in uh, 1988, Brother, Brother Lauren and myself took final oath together. It was a very happy day. His large family from Minnesota uh, came. A good number of my family came also, but probably more of his, because for a brother, uh, that final oath ceremony of perpetual, of a lifetime of obedience to the Marino fathers and brothers and to the people we serve, that is their, their shining ceremony the same way that for us who become priests, our ordination is a great ceremony. So it was a, it was a very fine and great day. Uh, before his oath and before ordination for me, uh, Lauren was sent on mission. Uh, he did not go to Japan as I did. He was sent to Africa where he, be, he began his long and many years of working in Africa. Lauren, Brother Lauren is very friendly and outgoing. Uh, those you might say are his greatest talents. Very bright, very friendly, and constantly concerned about others. In Africa, he's had a long time where he's worked with youth, especially troubled youth. Uh, right now, he is working both with students in the very poor, but uh, a country full of good and positive people. In the very poor country of Tanzania, he works uh, both with students and also uh, with the aged, uh, trying to keep uh, the church close to those who are aging and their needs and with his visitations and prayers. So, as you can tell, I'm very proud and happy to know Brother Lauren. He's my brother missionary uh, for all these years serving in Africa. And, uh, and I, th I feel thankful for him, and, and we all thank him for his work and the work of many Marino brothers, both on the missions and those who support our work here in the United States. All of our work, all of his work, it's only possible with the prayer and support of you, uh, members of our prayer guild and friends of Mary Noel, and we thank you for them and ask you for your continued prayers. Our next prayer guild will be webcast on June 10th, 2023, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you and God bless you.